Hello, it's Patrick from the GarageBand Guide. This is GarageBand Q&A, the video series where I do my best to answer your GarageBand questions and queries. Stick around to the end of the video where I'll let you know how you can submit your own GarageBand questions and perhaps have them featured on this show. Okay, on to the first question. Is it now safe to install Mac OS Catalina? I've had this question from tons of people over the last few months, and with macOS Big Sur just around the corner, it might seem a little strange to be still having this conversation now, but it's easy to forget just how much trouble Apple's current version of macOS caused at launch. <laughs> You may remember that I released a video just as macOS Catalina was released, warning people not to update to it. The reason being that plugin and gear companies in their droves were contacting customers directly, telling them that their products wouldn't work in macOS Catalina. Crazy stuff. The vast majority of these compatibility issues have been solved now, so there's a good chance you won't run into any issues should you choose to install Catalina on your machine? Mm, probably. Double check the website of any can't live without plugins or gear just in case, and I'd still recommend backing up using Time Machine before updating just in case. Better to be safe than sorry, hey? And note that if you're that one person who's still using GarageBand version 6.0.5, that version will not work in macOS Catalina. So come and join the rest of us in the future and download GarageBand version 10 if you want to update. The next one comes from Facebook where Nicolette has an issue with recording vocals. I have a question about recording vocals in GarageBand. I just don't understand why GarageBand, when recording over the top of existing takes, deletes the existing take. How can I record over the top of a take and then strip back the new take without the old one being deleted? Thanks. And thank you for that, Nicolette. So basically, you need to set up multiple take recording before hitting the record button to capture multiple takes. In GarageBand for Mac, you need to activate the yellow cycle region by clicking on it. It's just above the ruler there. It's sized to four bars by default, but you can resize it as needed and move it to the required position in your project by dragging and dropping it. Hit record and each time the playhead reaches the end of your cycle region, it will jump back to the start and record another take. Once done, you can access your different takes by clicking the number in the top left of your recorded region. In GarageBand for iOS, there isn't a cycle region. Instead, you'll need to open Track Settings, tap again on Track Settings, then Recording, and tap here to turn on Multi-Take Recording. Now, every time you record over the same region, a new take will be captured. Similar to the Mac version, you can access your takes by long tapping on the region and selecting the Takes option from the menu. Thanks for that one, Nicolette. Finally, Tony got in touch via email to ask, I forgot to ask if I should upgrade to the latest version of GarageBand as the reviews all seem very bad. I would really like your opinion on this one before I destroy everything. Thanks again. And thanks for your question, Tony. I'm not 100% sure which version of GarageBand you're coming from, but if you're referring to the update that was released last month, then absolutely 100% yes. Go for it. I mean, there weren't any new features, sounds, or instruments added to, or anything exciting like that. Instead, we got over one gigabyte of bug fixes. but it won't do anything to destroy or negatively affect your current projects. If you're talking about upgrading from GarageBand version 6.0.5, that's the version that came with the 2011 release of Apple's iLife suite of programs, 
then yes, definitely hop over to the Mac App Store and download the latest version. GarageBand 10 is a completely different and separate program to GarageBand version 6.0.5, and you can have both programs present and running separately on your machine. Unless you've decided to update to macOS Catalina, of course. You can open projects created in GarageBand 6.0.5 in GarageBand 10, but note that once you've done that and saved them, you can't then open them back in the older version of the program. As always, 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 always back up before updating if you're unsure. That'll about do it for this episode of GarageBand q and If you've got your own GarageBand dilemma you'd like resolved, here's how you can get it to me. Leave a comment under this video or you can fire me a message over on Facebook, Twitter or by email. You'll find links to all of those down below. I have been Patrick from the garagebandguide.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.